Melinda Haynes, license number 102308. How do I get a child who's not engaging in therapy to engage in therapy? Well, first of all, congratulations. <laughs> this is a good learning opportunity. Secondly, you don't force the child to engage and you also don't terminate therapy. A lot of times I've, I've heard of and I've seen therapists terminate therapy with a, a, a family because the child isn't participating. And they're like, well, he or she isn't talking and you know they just sit there and ignore me and so we're not making any progress so I'm gonna terminate. I need to caution you that that kind of attitude is more about you. About you feeling like, oh, I'm a good therapist. Oh, look at how much progress I'm making with this child. That, you know, that's not, that's not it. Right now it's, it's your client, well, always it's your client. So we have to focus on the client. So I want to tell you that there is work being done when the child is refusing to participate. Work can still be happening. So what you're doing is you're showing up consistently. Let's say your appointments every, you know, Wednesday at one o'clock. That child knows to expect you. That child gets into a routine of expecting a reliable adult to be there and to be engaged in their life. And the fact that you're just sitting there in their presence, not expecting anything from them, not telling them what to do, not forcing them to do anything, um, you know, not giving them worksheets and making them, you know, play or talk or, you know, asking them a hundred questions. You're not doing any of that. You're just sitting in their presence. Maybe you're going for a walk. Maybe you're throwing rocks at the lake. Maybe you're um, just coloring and they're not. And you're just like, oh, you know, do to do, you know, and you're, you're coloring a page and you ask them to join. Maybe you play tic-tac-toe. Maybe you do, you know, you play a game, you do whatever it is that they want to do. Because the fact of the matter is you're there being a caring, loving person that is safe. So even if it's just once a week for 50 minutes, you're that safe space, you're that safe container. And when they're ready, then they can start either talking or they can go out and start taking some of this stuff, this internalization of the safety that you're providing, they're internalizing and they're taking out into the world with them. So then all of a sudden you start to see a reduction in behaviors outside of the therapy office. And you're like, I, I didn't even do it. I didn't do anything. I don't know how it happened. Well, yeah, you did it methodically by making sure that you were there, you were safe, you weren't um, forcing them into something, telling them how to behave. They hear enough of that all day long. Teachers, um, parents, you know, if they have a divided household, you know, mom's house, dad's house, they've got different roles, they're trying to figure it all out. My teacher wants me to behave this way, my mom wants me like this, my dad wants me like that. None of that's happening in your office. So they're internalizing the safety and now they're taking it out into the world. They no longer have the need to control, to manipulate, to lie, to, to steal, whatever kinds of behaviors you know, brought them into therapy in the first place because you've given them that, that safe container, that environment that kids internalize. Because remember, children do internalize their, their environment. So your child took that with them, gave, made it a part of their own self, and now they're able to act out that stuff when they're at school, when they're at home, that kind of, um, that kind of thing. It's like they're generalizing. Your uh, acceptance, your unconditional positive regard, uh, all of that safety stuff are taking it with them out into their life and their community. So please don't lose hope when you're working with a child who's not participating. Just relax. Make it about them. If they don't want to talk, they don't have to talk. If, they're, if they want to play, they can play. Just make it about them. Make it about them for that 50 minutes. Because what you're doing is you're building rapport, you're creating a safe space, you're providing a safe container for them. So maybe those are some words you can put in your treatment notes. <laughs> you got, you got you to gotta document it. It's got to it's gotta be written into the treatment plan so that you can build insurance it's just you know the necessary evil of life so i hope that helped if you have any comments post them below thanks for watching